man, good to be in the house of God this morning. And happy New Year to everybody. Glad to be here on the first Sunday of 2024. What a blessing it is to be in the house of God. And uh, just a wonderful looking crowd today. Appreciate everybody for coming. And hope we have a, a wonderful year here in the house of the Lord here at Friendship. I'm looking for good things to happen this year. I'm looking for a lot of people to get saved, people to join the church, people to rededicate their life. And just most of all, people just grow closer to the Lord and to one another. Uh, it's my desire that the church has good fellowship and good unity one with another. And Psalms 133 verse 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And it is a pleasant thing to dwell in unity with one another. We're so glad to be here today. Glad to see each of you. Hope everybody's doing well. I know we had a lot out sick last week and some were able to come back today. And what a blessing that is. Don't have many announcements uh, today. Thank you. Thank goodness. I mean, we've had so much going on the past two months. January, I think, is going to be a slow month for our church, and that's a wonderful thing. Sometimes you just need a breather. You just need to take a break. And uh, I love the holiday season, but uh, this was one of the first years I've ever said I'm glad it come to an end just to quit running here, running there, and just so we can enjoy life and enjoy the Lord's blessings. He is so good to us. I tell you, we, we've uh, been blessed in so many ways by... Uh, his bountiful hand, and we are so thankful for all that he's done for us. He saved us, put us in a, a good church, called us to preach, give us a good family, a good home. I was thinking this morning when all the prayer requests was being turned in, just was thinking about my immediate family and extended family. From what I could tell, we didn't have anybody sick in my immediate family or extended family, and, and so many has been struggling with different things, and I just want to praise the Lord for that this morning. I mean, he's, he's been so good to us, and... Uh, not saying we won't, we might come down with the flu tomorrow, but we have been held. <laughs> My wife's giving me a look. She's like, if we come down with the flu, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. But uh, anyway, I, I mean, I'm just thankful, so thankful that God has taken good care of us and he's put us in a good place this morning. I'm glad to be in his will, and uh, I, I firmly believe that I'm in the center of his will today, and that's where I want to stay this year, and uh, we, we hope and pray that you want to stay in his will as well. Uh, the preach last Sunday on your commitment to God, and then we had uh, a huge Sunday school crowd this morning. I, hey, I mean, if I had to preach on that again today and next Sunday to get y'all to come back to Sunday school, I'll do it. But we glad to see y'all. Hope everybody uh, becomes more committed this year uh, to the Lord's house and to being faithful to Him. Don't don't do it for me. Do it for God. I mean, God's the one that we need to be faithful to. He was faithful to us when He sent Jesus, and Jesus could have quit going to the cross, but. Uh, he could have went back to heaven, but he chose to go the whole way. I want to go the whole way for him this morning. Uh, tonight, we had talked about having choir practice, but I forgot. Our business meeting will be Wednesday night, so we'll have a deacon's meeting tonight anyway. Uh, so uh, we won't have choir practice tonight. Uh, so you uh, come back Wednesday night if you can for Bible study. We're still in the book of Acts on Bible studies on Wednesday night. And uh, it's a, a good study. I mean, just real open environment. Just want, want everybody to comment, everybody to uh, feel free to just give what's on your heart. And uh, so if you've not been coming to Wednesday night Bible study, I encourage you to start coming and being a part of that. We start at 6 o'clock on Wednesday nights and uh, typically out of here by 7. So uh, I, I think that everybody uh, can try to work that in your schedule if, if, if be. So we'd love to see you on Wednesday night. But we're glad to see each of you today. And once again, we will have a business meeting on Wednesday night. Uh, anything on anybody's heart today before we uh, go, in, go to the Lord in prayer and then go back to the singing? All right, Brother uh, Daniel Smith, would you lead us in prayer this morning?
good singing. Thank the choir for the good singing this morning. This time we're going to take up this morning's offering. Brother Phil, would you pray over the offering this morning? Man, thank you, Sister Kell. All right, let's turn, if you would, to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18. Ezekiel, chapter 18, is where we're going to preach from this morning. Ezekiel, chapter 18. I ask you that know the worth of prayer to pray for us for just a few minutes while we try to give you what's on our heart. And uh, thank God for each of you that's come. I mean, hey, if we can get this right side looking like this left side, we'll be in, in fine shape around here. But, um, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming this morning. It's a blessing to see each of you in the house of God. And um, we are so thankful for each of you for making an effort to come. And uh, we want you to stay committed all year long if you can. Be, be found in the house of God. And the Lord will bless you if you'll do that. I've not found a better place in this world since I've got saved in the house of God. And, uh, I mean, I, I get so much help every time that I go. Whether there's a lot of people there or not, the Lord, He uh, is faithful to meet with us if we are prepared to meet with Him. And I thank the Lord for just the privilege and the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Ezekiel chapter 18 is where we're going to begin reading. And i uh, got some scripture on my heart I want to read today. And we'll just read till the Lord tells us to stop. You bear with us this morning while we try to read. We'll try to go ahead and get into it. Maybe a little lengthy reading this morning. I uh, just got some scripture on our heart today. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath, hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a menstruous woman, and hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment, he that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase, that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just, he shall surely live, saith the Lord God. If he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains, and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, and hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination, hath given forth upon usury, and hath taken increase, then shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Now, lo, if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sins which he hath done, and considereth and doeth not such like, that man or that hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hath not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath oppressed any, hath not withholden the pledge, neither hath spoiled by violence, but hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment, that hath taken off his hand from the poor, that hath not received usury nor increase, hath executed my judgments, hath walked in my statutes, he shall not die for the iniquity of his father, he shall surely live. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his, uh, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet say ye why, doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. 
The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do, which, do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? I want to go ahead and just finish the reading of the chapter this morning, just eight, about eight, eight or nine more verses. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal, are not your ways unequal. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Thank you for reading along with us this morning as we read the scripture. I need your prayers this morning. I've never preached on this text, and uh, you've probably never heard a message titled uh, what I'm about to title it, and, but the, the title will probably stick in your mind, and I hope that it will go home with you today. And you may never have heard one like it before, and you may never hear one like it again, Brother Jerry. But the title of this message this morning is the, in verse 2 where it says, the Lord asked the question, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, and this is the title, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. I just want to preach on the fathers have eaten sour grapes this morning. And odd title to some, I guess you might say, but let's look at what it means this morning. It's found in Jeremiah chapter 31. Verse number 29 is where it's found, but... I want to read just a, a couple of verses in your hearing, and then we'll get into the message. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. Verse 29, In those days they shall say no more, The fathers have eaten a sour grape. And the children's teeth are set on edge, but every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. And so that's what we find when we get to Ezekiel. These people, the Jews here are saying that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and, and our teeth are set on edge, or the children's teeth of the fathers have been set on edge. If you eat a forbidden fruit, you'll find it to be sour and your teeth will be set on edge. Set, to set one's teeth on edge is an idiom. It's used to describe particularly something annoying. And, and to be on edge, we know that that means to be nervous or to feel anxiety, not calm, to relax. And so the Jews here were making complaint to, to God saying that our teeth are set on edge because the fathers have eaten sour grapes. And we uh, find in the book of Genesis that the Lord forbids of the, of the tree uh, to eat from, and, and Adam and Eve, they eat from that tree. And the, the Bible says that the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. And, 
and she did eat and also gave to her husband and he did eat as well. And so I want to say if you eat of the forbidden fruit first of all, that you will find it to be bitter, you'll find it to be sour, you'll find it to not taste like you thought it would. And so I, I believe here that when we, when we talk about these men or the fathers that have eaten a sour grape, that they set their eyes upon the things that were forbidden by God and, and they thought that it might bring pleasure to their life and yet they find their end to be total ruin. They found uh, that this would bring bitterness to their life, much uh, trouble to their life. And certainly this morning, uh, if you eat of that forbidden fruit or you take of the forbidden sins in, in the Word of God that God has commanded that we stay away from, uh, you will find...